Hi everyone, I'm with Sanailon. And welcome to Cafe with Lissa, Coffee with Lissa, where we chit chat about things that I want to talk about while sipping on some coffee because like I'm very passionate about coffee. So today I really want to talk about, and this is something that it's a little old. But I want to talk about it anyway because I haven't heard a black girl talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about colorism and racism in adult entertainment, strip club scene specifically. So I can speak about this topic because I've experienced it firsthand. I'm an entertainer. I originally worked in New York. I had my first experience with discrimination in the club when I started working in urban clubs, believe it or not. Because when I worked in more of like the cabaret style clubs, which is more, say, kind of white collar, put it that way, I can't say I really just, uh, I, I really just received like flat out like racism. It, was just, it, it, it never usually happened to me. When I moved to Florida, I would say that was my first experience. Um, Orlando has a lot of Puerto Rican men, so they definitely you can definitely feel when they didn't want you around. I remember I had somebody say to me once, I have money, but not for you. <laughs> and I just felt like that was so unnecessary, you know? And I know what you're probably gonna say, like, well, you know, you're in a strip club, you know, how, you know how men could be. But you could kind of tell when they shun the black girl, but then they like show the Spanish, the, the light skinned Spanish girl love. Like, you could kind of tell what was the real reason that you were trying to play me, you know? So it was a Latin club that I was working in. I'm not gonna front. When I did do well, it was mostly the Latin men that showed me love. Um, the most discrimination that I received was always from black guys. I don't know what it is. Black men do not like their women. And I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I can't talk for like Atlanta and Charlotte. And like, you say like the Bible Belt states where like, you know, black people f with each other, you know? We talk, talk about like New York, Florida. Like, black people don't like black people. And they, they let you know. I mean, I just had just some nasty experiences, you know. So I actually had people like physically like like put their hands on me to move me out of the way. And we're not we're not really gonna talk about how I handled that, but <clears throat> it's bad, you know. And in my mind, I'm like, all right, well listen, I'm from New York. We'll have these problems in New York. There ain't no racism in New York. I can't wait to go back home. I can't wait to graduate and get out of this whack or Orlando. Fast forward, I graduate. I run back to New York. Like, I run back. I start working at urban strip clubs because I've already, like, experienced working in them, you know? Man, when I tell you I thought Florida was bad. So... My first bad New York experience was at Starlets. And I know people that's not from New York, you know, you guys praise Starlets. Because, you know, it's a big name club. So people are always like, what about Starlets? What about Starlets? And I try not to sound like a hater. You know, but when black people ask me about that club, I want to let them know, like, they don't, they don't like us there. So what happened was... There was an incident where I got on stage, right? It was me and two two Dominican girls. The there were some customers sitting there, black guys. Wasn't showing none of the black girls love. So you know I ate that. I was like, all right, you know I'm gonna go to the other side of the stage. All of a sudden, somebody starts like throwing money. So you know I'm trying to I'm trying to work. I'm trying to get this money. And I hear the DJ changing the rotation for you know, for a new set of girls to come on stage. And I'm looking at these Spanish girls and I get on the stage. 
And I see all this money coming, so I'm like, well, they're not getting off. I'm not going to get off. You know, I'm going to try to get as much of this money as I can. The DJ comes out of his booth, comes up to the stage, and takes me off the stage because he's a Spanish girl, dude. And I was like, yeah, you will never see me in Starbucks ever again. So, and like, I kind of felt like the shadiness, you know, but you always try to, you always try to be optimistic, right? You don't ever want to assume like, well, you know, maybe the people, yeah, I'm just not their type. You don't want to think it's because of your, your race. You know, but then when you like look around and none of the black girls are making money, it's like, yeah, yes, it's a race thing. You know what I'm saying? So then I go to a cityscape. Same thing. I'm on stage and mind you, I just seen girls go on stage. They on stage, you know, like five, six minutes because they up there for like two, three songs. I go on stage. This guy that I'm cool with, he's right by the stage. So, you know, he sees me, shows me love, throws money on the stage. As soon as the money hits the stage, DJ's like, yeah, you know, you can get off the stage. I'm like, it's weird, I just got off stage. And, you know, my subconscious, like, the, the guy inside my head is like, um, it's because you're black. <laughs> and I see, like, different things, like, People say, like, I don't want to be bothered, but then, like, the little Colombian girl, the little light skinned girl goes over there. And when I say light skin, I don't mean like red bone, I mean like, you know, like what you expect Spanish girls to look like. And the situation changes. All of a sudden, they want to be bothered. And I just saw that a lot in New York. And um, I know that they had started, like, that whole NYC stripper strike, right? And I was pro the strike. I'm going to get into why I left that. But I was pro strike. But that, so it the, that started because there was a whole like, okay, so I think originally it started because of the mistreatment of dancers. Because New York don't really mess with the dancers like that. They're more for the bartenders. And I guess that's how it started. Because New York don't treat their dancers right. See, at least not anymore they don't. Maybe once upon a time they did. I feel like after Ace is closed, club just felt like we treat you like trash and you don't have no choice. <laughs> you know? I know I just talked about Starlets. I follow one of the managers. Um, I forget his name. I want to say Manny, but I'm not quite sure. He's cool. You know, like, like we like crack jokes and stuff on my Like, he's a cool dude. But the other manager, the, the king of the strip clubs dude, like he he has let girls, he's let it be known to NYC. We do not need you dancers. You know, because apparently strip clubs are not for the dancers, they're for everybody else. Comments like that really kind of stirred up what was going on. And you know, you got all these little rap promoters that feel like they're entitled to their say. Let me just say, like, for a while, like, I wasn't really experiencing, like, I was experiencing just the savagery of the club because of the way the customers had become when it just stopped being about the dancers. But I think for me, it was it, the color thing really bothered me. And that's what kind of made me leave because ain't no Spanish guy going to tell me you don't get treated differently because you're black. Meanwhile, you're treating me different, <laughs> you know? So there's only like, probably like one club out there that like I'll seldomly go out there and be like, what's up? But for the most part, like I don't mess with those clubs. So, like I said, NYC stripper strike, right? We had the leader of the, of the pack or whatever, a Spanish girl. She says that she's Spanish and black, cool. So, this is how I feel about that. During the civil rights movement, do you feel like it would have been powerful to listen to a white guy talk about how important it is for black people to have equal rights? Do you think black people would have really cared if there was a white man on the podium? 
or do you think it was powerful because Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, these people were black. So it was more identifiable, right? Because you're like, that guy looks like me. So he's fighting for us. As opposed to, if it was like a white guy, you'd be like, mm, well, you know, you really can't relate to our experience. Like, I appreciate the effort, but you don't really speak for me. So that's how I kind of felt about the strike. Now, the girl, who was the leader, she's half Spanish and half black like me. But unlike me, she doesn't look black. Like, she looks like a Spanish girl. And she, I know that she, she, I just hate when people be full of shit, you know, talk about I, I get discriminated against as a black woman. Meanwhile, I know that everybody that sees you does not think you're black. And what made me walk away from her was that she got invited to do a speech for how it's hard as a black woman working in adult entertainment, and that really, really pissed me off. Because I feel like, you don't look nothing like me. You don't look nothing like these girls out here that's trying to hustle, but is having a hard time, because they black. And, you know, and I can only say but so much, because, yeah, I'm black, but I'm not even, like, dark-skinned. And I know that dark-skinned girls in New York get it the worst. And, I mean, it's literally because of their skin color, because a lot of these girls are gorgeous. You know, so it like pissed me off because I'm like, you're not speaking for us. You speaking for you. You're mad that you're not making money. You're not mad that we are not making money. You know. And I remember there was a particular promoter, Strike Sinatra. I really respected him when he was like, there are black girls out here really having this type of issues, and you are basically getting clout by talking about their issues when you know you don't experience those things. You didn't go anywhere out here and make money. And people love it because you look Spanish. Because you are Spanish, you know? And I know that sounds like kind of, it sounds very like one-sided because it's like, well, she's half Spanish like you. But she, she, she's Spanish, you know what I'm saying? She's not black. And I'm gonna stick to the, to the fact that I said that. I don't care how wrong it sounds. So I had to walk away from that movement because I was supporting her in the beginning. But then I realized, like, you're not fighting for us. You know, like, you're fighting for you. Let one of these clubs be like, yo, come out here and work. We got you. And they throw a bunch of bands on the stage. You gotta totally forget about the black girls. She's not gonna care about us. And that's a fact. So, so I left that. And now I'm out here and I'm in Texas. I told myself, I need to go somewhere that's black. You know, I'm tired of having to deal with this. Like, I want to go dance for black people that want to see black skin. So, I came out here to Dallas, and now I'm out here, you know. And there are, and it's, it's still a little weird, because now you got that whole, like, well, you're not really black. So, sometimes they kind of like you, and then sometimes it's like, well, we want, like, a real black girl. And I get, I do sometimes get that. And it's hard. Because I feel like the people who hate black people the most are other black people. If we really think about the way these clubs operate in New York, these predominantly Latin clubs, Latin people mess with their own. You know what I'm saying? Starlets is a predominantly Spanish club. And a good portion, not all of them, but a good portion of the clientele is Spanish. And it makes sense. You're going to support your people. So when it comes to that, like, I can't I can't really throw shade. Because maybe one of the main reasons that black girls get treated poorly is because we have approved that. Like, we, we see it as okay. Black people are the only people that won't support their own, but they support another group. If a club open today, Chinese people open up a Chinese club. It's Chinese girls, Chinese bartenders, like everybody's Chinese. Other Chinese people gonna go and support. Like, let me go see these beautiful women from my race. Let me go support these managers that come from where I come from, you know? And that goes for basically every other community. 
But then you got people shunning black girls. And then, like, the black guys are like, true, true. And then they go and then they shun them too. So do you think if, if somebody opened up, and we talk about in New York, you know, we're not going to talk about like Atlanta stuff. So you open a black club, black owner, open a black club, black bartenders, black dancers, you think Puerto Rico's going to come out and throw bands on these black girls? No. And I'm not, I know people are going to take this the wrong way. I'm not saying all black people are racist. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if they don't see no Latin girls, they're not going to that club. They want to see their girls. They want to see what they consider sexy. You know, and even if that's not necessarily what they consider sexy, you know, like they try to they try to support their own. Yeah, I just, it just don't be making no sense to me. You know, and I feel like black girls get mistreated because black guys are okay with it. Do you think... If they had, you know, the, the sprinkles of black girls that are in Starless, and black dudes came and showed it out on those girls, you think that club would continue to treat black girls like, like crap? Probably not. Probably not. You know, it would probably be, they'd probably, like, encourage, like, a better energy through the club. They'd be like, oh, you know, they showing love. We gonna show out, too, because you know how customers are. Or, I just say, you should, you know how people are. Monkey see, monkey do. You know, you throw money, I'm going to throw money too. But it's not like that. I think, like, it's terrible. Like, I just don't understand. And then, you know, these big name clubs, like, like Starlets, they, um, they got these celebrities coming in there. You know, got Casanova being in there, Jada Kiss, 50 Cent. You are okaying that they treat your women like sh garbage. You know, you're basically saying like, well, it's okay. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying like, well, you know, today I want to go see some Spanish girls. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with just, you know, you just want to see something different. You have a taste for something different. But there is something wrong when you see your girls in there. You see people treating them like trash and you're like, true. <laughs> like, that's... That doesn't make no sense to me. And I, I kind of, I mean, I feel aware about some of these celebrities that's doing that. I mean, true, like, I don't know the backstory. I don't know if maybe, like, the club is, like, paying them, like, here, we're going to give you two bands, throw it on our girls or whatever, you know, because that does happen. But typically, like, you're not going to see the Migos go into an all-Spanish club and watch black girls get treated like shit. They from Atlanta. They're not about to watch black girls get treated like crap. You know? It, it's a it's, it's definitely like a cultural thing. Because, you know, I would say like places, like I was saying before, places like Atlanta, black people support each other. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I just kind of wanted to speak on this topic because I felt like it's been kind of eating me up inside. I still seldomly go online, kind of see what's going on in New York, you know, and it's just progressively getting worse. And I think, I mean, now I think it's much, much worse, you know, like it's gotten beyond like racism and stuff. It's more like just people just not acting right. But I felt the need to like represent girls that look like me. I know I talk a lot about being Afro Latino, but I realized that in this particular situation, it's just really about discrimination against being black, period. So, to all my beautiful black sisters, you know, brothers too, because I know some of y'all out there dancing and stuff too, you know, like I'm, I'm here for you. And you want to comment down below about Regardless if it's in the adult entertainment scene, or maybe you've seen something, or maybe, you know, maybe you just dealt with stuff in your life work. It could be any life work. Just know, like, I understand. Comment below. Let me know what your issues have been like. How did you deal with those issues? What advice would you give to people that are dealing with those issues? Because sometimes it's not always okay to just ignore stuff. Sometimes you got to speak up. 
You know, ignoring stuff don't make things go away. Not, not, mo- not all the time. And then there, you know, there's a time and a place. Speaking up don't always make things go away too. Like you kind of, like I said, you you gotta know when to when is the right time to say something. So I appreciate y'all for listening to me rant. Wasn't my intention. But I just kind of wanted to get this off my chest. I've been having people tell me, like, you know, you need to speak up. So this is me speaking up. I hope that things in New York change. I hope that colorism everywhere changes. I hope that racism everywhere changes. Um, I don't care what club you work in and what establishment you work in. You deserve to be treated right. If you are black, you are beautiful. Love the skin that you're in. Embrace it. And if anybody tells you that it's not beautiful, you can tell them to go fluff themselves and tell them it's a nylon said so. So keep drinking your espresso and your coffee and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Till next time, bye. So, um, funny story, when I was a kid, like, well, when I was young, you know, like, early 20s and stuff, I swore I was brown-skinned. I still think I'm brown-skinned, but, um, a lot of my friends that are, like, of a lighter skin tone, you know, they consider, like, the light-skinned girls, and they got, I had, like, my dark-skinned friends, and when my dark-skinned friends would be like, I'm so tired of all these little light-skinned girls, I'd just be like, yeah, like, I'm tired of these little light-skinned girls, and they'd be like, you're light skinned. And I'm like, who? They're like, you. You're light skinned. And I'm like, you don't see all this, all this chocolate this way? <laughs> I had no idea that I was considered a light skinned girl, you know? Because I guess when I think of like red bone, I think of more of like a Lisa Ray type color. But, um, and that's, you know, no shade to the light skinned girls, you know? I guess, I guess I'm one of y'all, but deep down in my soul, I'm a, I'm a chocolatey girl. So when dark skin girls say they have a problems, no, y'all not have a problems. We have a problems. We as dark skin people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No one ever told me that I was, that I wasn't dark skin. Gosh, my whole life has been a lie. <laughs>